Hey, welcome back, everybody. Uh, we are going to be going through the notes here, uh, Unit 1.3 notes, uh, motion graphs. So we're going to go into uh, motion graphs. This is, for the most part, it's it's a quick set of notes, more or less just covering position time graphs and also velocity time graphs. We're going to make some. Uh, we are going to observe some. Uh, <clears throat> most of the time it will be just or most of the time on this video will be the check your understanding because uh, there isn't terrible a terrible amount of notes here so all right let, let's just get right to it okay so this is a good question so what do you know about kinematic graphs okay now it's possible that you know some maybe you know a whole lot maybe you don't remember really anything about graphs in general which i really hope is not the case but uh, just to remind you, remember, independent variables uh, are placed on the x-axis. Dependent variables are placed on the y-axis, typically, when we are putting together a graph. Okay, so when you're determining where, uh, where either, or when, when, so when you are determining where either variable goes, you should be thinking to yourself maybe two questions. You should be thinking, okay, does our movement, in this case, because we're talking about position time, velocity time, Okay, does our movement have an effect on time or does time move regardless of what I'm doing? Okay, another question would be, is the measurement of time dependent upon my motion or is the measurement of my motion dependent upon time? Okay, now what you should gather is that, especially in that second question, it's definitely the second option. Your measurement is of your motion is dependent upon time, right? It doesn't matter how much you move. You could not be moving at all, and time will still continue, right? So, so in this case, when we talk about PT graphs, when we talk about position time graphs, your position is going to be the dependent variable while your independent variable uh, is going to be time. But then the other thing you've got to remember, uh, because velocity is a vector quantity, uh, direction matters, okay? And when direction matters, uh, we have to consider what's a positive, uh, what's a positive movement uh, and what's a negative movement. What's a positive direction, what's a negative direction. So if we're moving northwards uh, at the beginning of an example, north is probably going to be, uh, or north will be the, the positive direction of motion. But then if we go south, south is going to be the negative direction of motion and we're going to see how that looks like on some graphs so let's just kind of take a look here oh shoot yeah so let's take a look here so out of the graphs presented on the, ne on the next two slides which be best represents i should say which or yeah which best represents these steps or which best yeah which ones best represent these steps sorry uh so first condition subject starts at the origin subject moves backwards slowly for six seconds, subject stands still for six seconds, subject moves forward twice as quickly at a constant rate for six seconds. Okay, so I'll say that I'll go through this again. Okay, this is what's happening to whatever the subject is and we're going to see if we know which graph will represent this kind of motion. So subject starts at the origin, subject moves backwards slowly for six seconds, Subject stands still for six seconds. Subject will move forward twice as quickly at the constant rate or at a constant rate for six seconds. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next slide. Okay. Uh-oh. There we go. Okay. So taking a look at these, I want you to pause the video and I want you to consider and, and think about what the, pro what the correct answer is for position time. Okay. So you can go back and check out the, the, uh, conditions again. We'll pause the video. Try to answer this on your on your own. Okay. So let's see. All right. So for this one, for position time graph. So remember, uh, like in the first slide, time is going to be our independent variable, and time is going to be found on our x-axis, which it looks like each and every one here is. Is correct. Yeah, all time in seconds on the x-axis, and then we've got position in meters on the y-axis. Okay. Now, the correct answer for this is going to be B. Okay. The correct answer is B. So remember, the subject is going to walk backwards. Okay. The subject is going to walk backwards. So backwards implies that that it's a negative direction. Okay, because let's say let's say on B here, let's say this is our compass. If this is south and this is north, 
just as an example, let's say north is, is going forward, south is going backwards. So when you're going backwards, you're moving in a negative direction, okay? And then when you are then just standing still, there is no change in your direction, right? There is no change. Wherever you stopped, that's your position, uh, you know, uh, if you began at the origin. So, so it'll maintain. And then here, we're moving twice. We're moving twice as quick, but at a constant rate forward. And if you notice here, it kind of looks like you can kind of see, right? You can kind of see that this, the, the size, give or take, here, right here, is the same as this. So this implies there's a double in, in your rate. There's a double in the change of position, but it's at a constant rate again. So that's why, that's why uh, B is the correct answer for the position time graph. Remember, this is position time, okay? Position time. Okay, because we've got position and we've got time expressed in our graphs. Okay, so let's now check out the next one. Okay. So now velocity time graphs. So pause the video. Uh, there we go. Pause the video. I want you to take a look to figure out which one is the correct answer, and then we'll come back and then answer. So go ahead and pause that video, and we'll see you in a bit. Okay, so you pause the video, you've got your answer, uh, and what you should have came up with, you should have come up with F, okay? So why F? Well, remember, this is now velocity time. So, so this is velocity time graph. And like I said, when, we are, when we're looking for, we're expressing uh, velocity through these graphs, uh, position, which is just displacement on these graphs, um, Direction is everything. Direction is everything. So we should know, just kind of glancing at all these, we should know that pretty much like, you know, A can't be it. B definitely can't be it because it's identical to the last one. Uh, C, I could, you could see, I could see why C could be the, the answer, but no. Um, and you can, I can see why D may be the answer, uh, but, but also no. Okay. It's there. We can. We should be able to just immediately get rid of these because uh, they just don't express it correctly. Uh, we if we look at E again. Notice so so E is implying that that there's backwards motion at the end of the at the end of the trial when there's not. So we can say no to E immediately. Um, if we look at G and H and F, we can see okay. There's there's positive motion uh, in all three of these, but we can get rid of H straight out because remember the last six seconds is a double in velocity okay and as you can see here the lines they're pretty much equal okay it's kind of saying that let's say he was traveling at like five meters per second and then he and then he stood still okay for six seconds and then he got back and then he started traveling at five meters per second again that's not what happened here and also the fact that as you'll see you know Remember, he was traveling in the, in the negative direction. So our, the first point here over here, the first like value is in the wrong spot on our grid. And that's why G is also just not the right answer. It's because again, we start with negative velocity because it's in the negative direction. We're going backwards, okay? And that's why F is the correct answer. We've got our negative, we've got our negative uh, velocity here, which I know sounds weird, but it, again, it's because of the direction, because we're moving backwards, okay? And then it moves up, like at a split second. This this right here, there's no gain in time. It's it's boom, they stop moving, and then it's zero. There There is no motion. It is zero, right here is like zero meters per second, right here, okay? It's zero. They're at standstill. And then you can see this uh, approximate double of velocity. Okay, at the moment that they begin to walk again, because again, there's no loss or gain in time. It goes straight up. Okay, and then it's the constant velocity at that rate continuing. Okay, so if you still don't get this, make sure you either watch this again, make sure you talk to me, uh, because this is a fundamental kind of idea uh, and a really good kind of warm up exercise to, you know, see what is what we're looking for in, in our VT graphs and our PT graphs. Okay, so a little bit of notes. So position and velocity graphs, 
Uh, these graphs visually express the motion of our of an object. Okay, so let's real quick, let's observe the data table below and the corresponding graphs with it and, and try, try to pick out those patterns yourself, okay? So just pause the video, kind of take a look at this, pick them out yourself, see if you can see the, uh, uh, the patterns, you can see the similarities, okay? So go ahead and do that. Okay, so, so looking at the, just kind of going over those similarities, because again, this, this data table here corresponds with these two, these two uh, graphs. Okay, so we've got a, this is our PT graph right here, our position time, and then we've got our VT graph here, our, our velocity time graph, okay. Um, and what we'll see, we'll, I'm gonna show you some neat little tricks here uh, when we get to the check your understandings to kind of understand better how it is we put this together. But let's look. So looking at the data here, so here's our time, and we see that they are going in increments of 60 seconds, okay? And then if we uh, look at our position here, it seems that it's at a constant rate. Every 60 seconds, it seems like we are moving uh, 330 meters uh, per 60 seconds. Okay, so we have constant velocity being, ex uh, being expressed here. So what we should expect is we should expect to see a graph that, that reflects that, that is in a straight line, just going straight up. Is, and that's exactly what we see over here in our PT graph, in our position, our displacement time graph, our position time graph. Okay, here's zero, here's probably 330 at the first 60 mark, here's 120. And then there is the, uh, roughly speaking, about 660, and then 180, uh, and then uh, 990 uh, at the 180, okay? Constant velocity, right? Constant velocity. And then we have this nice straight uh, line going up, nice straight slope. Okay. And then velocity, this is exactly right, okay? This is exactly right. And here's here's the neat trick, is that, that you can... Um, or I'll get, we'll get to that later, sorry. But, but anyway, so because we know it's, 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 uh, it's constant velocity, uh, that means they've maintained the same velocity every 60 seconds uh, throughout, the entire, uh, throughout the entire experiment. So what we expect to see is that over time, we're going at the same rate. There's no change, right? There's, we're, we're not going, you know, we're not going like this, you know, we're not, like we saw in the previous slide, we're not going, you know, five, and then we're just, we're coming to a stop, and then we're picking up five again, right? We're not doing that. We're not seeing that. It's a constant velocity going across the entire, uh, the entire graph. Okay. So, again, if you don't, if there's still some things you're a little stuck on, it's fine. We're going to keep on moving. We're going to try to see if we can figure this out, Okay. So if we notice, yeah, these graphs represent the same situation. Look at the slope of the PT graph on the left, and what does it tell you? Well, we kind of already went into what it tells you. It tells you that the velocity is constant, okay? And that's what we see in the VT graph, is that it's constant velocity. And it looks like it's probably about 5.5 is what it looks like. Maybe 5.5, somewhere between 5.5 and 6, okay? So the slope of the PT graph describes the average velocity of the VT graph, okay? Yes, it does. The slope right here, the slope here is, uh, it should be, uh, let's see, or not the slope, sorry. Uh, but they show constant velocity, yeah. Okay, yeah, I was getting ahead of myself talking about slope. So check your understanding number one. All right, so I'm just going to get right into the answers here for, for this, so... Uh, remember, you can find the answers uh, below in, well, most of them, yeah, you can find below. Now, this one, though, I have the sketching portion. Obviously, I'm going to do that on here. Um, but, uh, yeah, anyway. So, describe the motion of the graph to the right. Uh, then, sketch the corresponding velocity time graph. Cool. All right. So, now this one, I'm, I'm, I've got to be honest, I, I'm, I'm okay with this graph. I'm not a terrible fan of it because... Here's, here's what I don't like about it. Because the first example was great. We talked about, you know, in the very beginning of this, we talked about, you know, beginning at the origin, but we don't begin at the origin on this one. We start, we're starting whatever, whatever this point is up here. We don't know what it is, but whatever that point is, we're starting up here. So to me, what that implies is that there was already forward motion in some positive direction. And then this, we're, we're then accounting for the change in the direction 
uh, at that moment. Uh, and, and I'll show you why I'm not a fan of this when we get to uh, when I'm getting to the velocity, uh, the velocity uh, time graph, because uh, it 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 doesn't exactly line up perfectly with this. So to show you what I wish it showed, this is what I think it should have showed. I think it should have showed this. I think we have we've got our displacement over here and we've got our time over here. I think. I think <clears throat> what it should have done is that it, this should have been, you know, we had a, we've got zero here. Um, if this is our, ah, it's it's difficult. It, what they what they should have done is what they should have done is it should have been like starting here and then going down uh, is what they should have done. Again, I I'll, I could find another graph at some point, uh, but this is what I've had to work with so far. But anyway, again, I'll show you why that doesn't exactly match up with the uh, with the VT graph. But anyway, so let's describe the motion here. So as if you've, if you've already read the answer, then you've already seen it. But just to reiterate it again, what we see here is that we are beginning up here at some, some positive position, uh, but we are moving downwards over time. Okay. So over time, at a, at, and not just that, at a constant rate, we are moving uh, in a negative direction over time, whatever that may be. So we know that it's, this is constant velocity. Okay. So constant velocity. We know it's constant velocity. Okay. And it's negative. It's a negative constant velocity because it's in the negative direction relative to whatever our positive direction is, which if, if this is, it says here, uh, meters west, uh, so I'm guessing if west is our positive, then we're moving east, okay? Over time, we're moving east at a constant rate, okay? So, so we know constant velocity, so we, could, we should have kind of an idea of what our VT graph should look like. So let's just kind of plot that real quick. So we have our time at the bottom, that's going to be in seconds. And then we've got our average velocity over on the side, and we can just say that's in meters per second, Okay. Okay. So this is what it should look like. Okay. Because we are moving in the negative direction. Here, let me start over with that. Because we are moving in the negative direction. Okay. It should look like this. So here's, here's our origin. And then here's our uh, average velocity. Okay. And our time. Oh, I keep doing that. That's why I erased it last time. I'm going to put it over here. Okay. What we should see that is that, again, because it's constant velocity, we should see our line, our graph looking like this. It should look like this. Boom. Right? And then we would fill in, you'd fill in like all of this, as you saw in the other one. And there's a reason why. So we'd fill all of this in. Um, the it, And again, so here's our origin. And it's below because we're moving in the negative direction. And now you can see what I was concerned about, that, that this doesn't really, like this kind of graph doesn't really match up or line up with this. It does if you know what you're talking about. And it does if you know what you're working with. Um, and it's something that I'll just say you've got to be careful uh, with when you're looking at these graphs and you're making them yourselves. You've got to be precise. Okay. Now, you could, you could, Though it's going to be difficult and you've got to make sure you label it properly, um, you could do this. You could do this. You could say, you know, you've got your time here and you've got your VAV. And then you do this little sly guy right here. You put east. Oh, yeah, if you put east, then your line, then it's in the positive, right? Because now you're, you're explicitly saying it's, this is movement to the east, right? So if it's movement to the east and it's and you're putting it as part of your your positive y y uh, axis, you can make the argument that well they're moving east and over here you know their, their you know their displacement was west in the positive direction. You should know that that's negative. Okay, you could do that. I don't like that because it's one kind of deceptive. Two, it's super confusing. Um, and and three, uh, it it does it, it doesn't help the idea of learning. You know 
or it, it just makes it that much more difficult to learn about, uh, you know, vectors. So you could do that. Um, I'm not a, you know, again, I'm not a fan of it. I'm very much a fan of, look, we've got a positive direction. We have a negative direction. Um, and if west is our positive and east is our negative, uh, then if we're moving east, uh, that's your, you know, that's your VT. That is your, that's your velocity graph right there. So, okie doke. All right. So again, if you don't understand, if there's something you still don't understand, make sure you talk to me. Okay. So VT graphs also tell us about position. So using a VT graph, we can determine the, the displacement during any time period by multiplying the average velocity by the time interval. Okay. So recall our equation for average velocity. If we find it, to, if, uh, if we, oh my goodness. I think I, I meant to put, we use it <laughs> to find displacement. Oh my goodness. Yikes. Let me change that real quick. We use it. We use it to find displacement. Yikes. Okay. That makes much more sense. Boop, 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 boop. Oop. Okay, so here is uh, our uh, classic, you know, velocity, average velocity equation. We've got V equals D over T. Okay, but let's, we're going to solve it to D, uh, our displacement, equaling to our velocity times our time. So here's what's a really cool thing. What you should realize here is that we are now finding the area within a graph. Isn't that so cool? Because remember, what's area? All area, oops, all area is, is length times width. And if we kind of look over here, and this is kind of getting into the, the answer on the other side, but if we look over here, um, you could find your displacement by more or less the same way that you would find area. So let's kind of take a look at that in your check your understanding number two here. So pause the video here, uh, or, or sorry, I didn't have you do that last time, so don't do that. We're just going to get right into the answer. Okay, so find the area of the shaded region in the graph below and then state what the area represents. So again, how do we find area? Well, we know area. We know that area, okay, just a, just a simple A. Let's see, actually, it's actually capital A, I think. Uh, area is equal to length times width, right? Well, is this not width? And is this not time, or sorry, is this not length right here? Oh my goodness, it is. Now, the only difference is, is that it's, it's the shaded region below is what they're asking for. So we're talking about this little orange spot right here. Well, let's just try to figure this out best we can. So we got 15 here, like 15 to 20. And I'd say like, you know, there's 16, 17, 18, 19. So this looks like this is 18. So this is, the velocity is 18 meters per second, okay? And then our time here is between four and six. Okay, so if it's between four and six, well, what's six minus four? It's two seconds. So in this two second interval, okay, in this two second interval, they were traveling at this rate. So how do we find that? Well, we do this. Boop, boop, doo, 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 doo. We do this little number right here. We just multiply these together, which is going to be 18 times two, which is going to give us what? Oh my goodness, it's going to give us 36, but more importantly, 36 meters to the west. Okay, boom, and we've got it. So so this is what's really cool is that velocity time graphs uh, can tell us the position of a particular person by finding the, you know, the area within a given region. Um, now, of course, that's just within the this two second period right? This two second interval, you could definitely find, let's say this whole thing was, was shaded. Okay. It wouldn't be two times 18 anymore. It would be six times 18 at that point. If the whole thing was, was shaded in, if the whole, if we want to know the position at the very end, it'd just be eight times uh, 18. Okay. So it's, it's a really neat little thing, a uh, little doodad that comes along uh, in, in visualizing, representing this data. Okay. Oh, and I forgot to change that. That should not say acceleration up there. Sorry about that. I'll change that. Um, but check your understanding number three. So this one's going to be a bit longer. 
Um, so to answer this one, uh, we're going to actually move over to Google uh, Sheets uh, just so I can show it to you better. Uh, but let's just kind of go, uh, before I do that though, let's just go through this question first just and, and visualize what's happening in this question. Okay. So a military jet is flying in uniform motion, okay, at a constant rate uh, of 9.3 uh, times 10 to the second power, which is just 900, 930 meters per second south. At time zero, so this is when we're beginning the time, measuring our time and measuring our, our distance here. It passes a mountaintop, which is used uh, as a reference point for this question. And then, then we've got to answer each of these. So we've got a jet, check out my jet. It's so cool. Top Gun. So this jet is a zoom-in. And this jet comes to this mountaintop here. And when it hits this mountaintop, this is when the time starts. Okay, time starts here. And we're wanting to see, we're wanting to see what the position will be for our jet bird looking thing every single second. Okay, so every single second for, where is it at? For 12 seconds, okay? So this could be like one second, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, et cetera, et cetera. How far, what, what's gonna be the distance and what's the distance at each, at each uh, single second? And then we're going to put that onto a graph, uh, which again, we're gonna go over to Google Sheets to show and to express. We're gonna find the slope of the line segment uh, for the PT graph. Um, and answer all these questions and then move on to the VT graph. Okay, so let's, we're gonna do that over again. We're gonna do that over at um, Google Sheets. So uh, I'll see you guys over in Google. Okay, now we're back over here. So let's go ahead and let's start putting this graph together. So, all right. So we're going to start up here. We're gonna just give ourselves a title. Okay, we're gonna merge those. And we're gonna give ourselves a title here. Um, what kind of title could we give? Let's see. Uh, jet, jet, uh, jet constant velocity PT graph. Well, why not? All right, so remember, ask yourself, when we're trying to figure out how to set up this data table, we've got to remember what is our uh, independent variable and which one is our dependent variable. So you have to ask yourself, does my position, uh, is my position uh, altered by time or is the time altered by my position? Okay, remember we have no control over time. It's independent of, of what we want to do. So because of that, time is going to be over here. Oh, and it's also time in seconds, okay. Time in seconds. And then over here, we've got, we'll say position. You could put also displacement as well. And it's gonna say meters, okay? And now what we've gotta do is we've gotta fill in all this data. Now, gr great thing that we're doing this on Google Sheets and not by hand, uh, because we can do this. Now, if you did this by hand, more power to you. And actually, I kind of recommend it, but we can do this. So we can just put the first two uh, in here, like one second, two second, we can highlight them we can go to this little blue box right here and then we can drag down to about 12. So go down to 14 and boom, it's gonna autofill for us all the way down to 12. Now, we know that he's traveling at 930 meters uh, per sec, at 930 meters per second. Okay, we know that. Now, what's really neat about this, again, because he's moving at a constant rate, because we're told, uniform motion, okay? That means that every single second, he's gonna be moving at 930. How do I know that? Well, I can easily just use the equation I did up here. We're trying to find his position, right? And we're gonna multiply our constant velocity times our time, right? Times our time interval. So if our time interval is two and our constant velocity is 930, it's 930 times two. Okay, and there'll be 930 times three, times four, times five, times six. Okay, I hope we get the picture here. So what we can do now, because we know that it is constant velocity, okay, we can do the same thing that we did over here, over here. We put in the first two, we highlight them, and we can drag and drop all the way down. 
boom, and it'll give us exactly what we need. Now, just make sure, double check, make sure like, okay, what's 1860 plus 930? Okay, well, 900 is gonna give me 270, or sorry, 2700, I know that. 30 plus 60, it's gonna give me 90, perfect. So if, if this is correct, the rest should be correct. It wouldn't be a bad idea to, to double check I know that this is correct. We should yeah, have 11,160 meters at the very end. Good. Now, let's just make a graph out of it now. So remember, we're going to highlight, go to insert. We're going to go to chart, and it's going to give us our chart. Now, let's see. Now, it gave me a scatter plot because this is I've already you know done this on here. It's probably going to give you guys uh, a line graph looking like this first. Um, so don't be alarmed. Um, here, I'll, I'll walk you through uh, why it is that I want a scatter plot. But before we do that, let's make sure we change everything here. So jet constant velocity PT graph. Perfect. Okay, we've got time on the bottom. We've got position in meters on the side here. And we've got a nice straight line just as we expected uh, going up showing constant velocity. Okay. Now... One of the questions though, so we, we just answered, let's see, we just answered questions A, okay, we just did that, okay, answered A, uh, use the data uh, for, oh my goodness, use the data from the table to plot a position time graph from the table, from the table, and we're going to change this to position and velocity graphs. Uh, plot of, okay, sorry, and then uh, use the data, okay, did that, we answered A, B, and now we got to find C. So find the slope of the line segment on the position time graph. Is the slope constant? What does it represent? So um, now this is why we want to have the scatter plot. Uh, now because you guys have gone through algebra before, uh, we should just be able to pretty much just know exactly that, you know, well, slope is A, A or sorry, Y equaling AX plus B, right? Well, and, and if we're at a constant velocity, is there anything being added to our A and X? X being our time, A being, um, sorry, A, A being our, uh, uh, our velocity. Uh, no, there isn't, because then if there was, we would be kind of everywhere, right? Or at least it'd, it'd be more exponential. But we know that it's not doing that. It's a constant velocity, so it's gonna be zero, right? So it should be Y equals, 930x plus zero, okay? Now let's say we don't remember exactly how to find that slope, and let's say we wanna find that slope uh, the easier way. Well, what we do is that we click here on our graph, we go to setup, and this is why I had a, a scatter plot, okay? And it does change your, your title here, so watch out. So I made a scatter plot, okay? And I don't know why you can't do this on line graphs, it's only scatter plots, uh, but we're gonna click on these guys, oops, oh, no we're not, we're going to go down here, uh, or over, sorry, to uh, customize, and let's see. No, that's not what I want. No, series, that's what I want. I want series. We're going to click on series, and here's where we're going to put in a trend line, okay? And you see that the trend line is now connecting all of our data points. Okay, cool. Here's what we can do now, if I can find it. Oh my goodness. Well, it was doing it yesterday. What's going on, man? Ah, that's it. It's label. So we go here to label, and you can go custom, or you can go use equation. And if we hit use equation, boom, it's going to give us our slope. So this is this is what this is. is this is our uh, uh, this is the answer to our slope. Our slope is y. Okay, remember, because the slope is whatever, you know, position we're at on our y-axis according to our x. So y is equal to 930 times x plus 0. Okay, so that's how you find the slope. So this is our slope. So that now answers C, or at least part of it. So is the slope constant? Yes. How do we know that? Because it's plus 0. Uh, because it's 930 times, our, our, uh, times the time interval, and nothing else affects it. Okay, and what does it represent? Well, it represents our uh, velocity. Uh, it also represents, simply put, it represents our displacement uh, equation. Okay, 
uh, plot of velocity time graph on the lines are the plane's motion. So because we know that, uh, and I'll draw this one, I don't need to make it on here. Uh, because we know uh, that the, the velocity time graph on the plane motion, well, actually, no, I will make it here. Let's just quick make it. So we've got time. Actually, we'll just copy and paste this. Because again, it's constant. And then over here, we've got velocity. And it's going to be 930. Oop, we've got to put our units, meters per second. Now this one, you just put in one, and we're just going to drag it all the way down. It keeps it constant. OK. Uh, I'm going to center it just to make it look a little nicer. And it's already highlighted, but I want it just this highlighted. I'm going to go to insert. No, not image, chart. OK. And it should look like this. But this one here, we're going to change this one. We're going to change this one to this. OK. And actually, we can even make it look cooler. And we can make it shaded in, because it really should be shaded in. So here is what your velocity time graph should look like. Um, and then it's asking, well, what does the area under here represent? We've already asked that question before. We should know that this is our position, right? So if we want to know how far someone went uh, in 12 seconds going at this rate, we'd multiply 12 by 930, okay, length, or sorry, width times uh, length here, okay? Or you could say that this is width and this is this is length. However, which whichever way, way you want to call it, okay? Multiply them together and we should get our position, get our displacement, okay? So, and that's that's our velocity time graph. So the other one is uh, E and F. Oh, C, let's see. Oh, yeah, C we already got. Uh, e, calculate the total area under the line velocity graph. Yeah, well, we got that. It's 11,160. Uh, we got that from the data that we did in number or letter A. And then what does this area represent? We already talked about that, the position or displacement. Okay. So that's it for these notes. That's it for this demonstration. I know this was a longer-ish video, guys, a little bit more packed um, than, than uh, the other two you've, you've watched, but, but uh, still good stuff. This is, uh, uh, it's really, really cool to see how we can, you know, put all this together uh, pretty much just from some graphs and from some, from some data. It's really, really cool how everything, you know, it's all tied together. So anyway, that is the video. If you still have any questions, make sure you ask me. Uh, you can subscribe to the channel here uh, if you want to know when I upload videos. Um, and I will see you in the next one. So I will catch you later, guys. Thank okay, you. Thanks.